Starting today, hospitals across the province will be ramping down all elective and non-emergency surgeries. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health will provide the latest COVID update. You can watch live at citynews.ca. But first, joining me now with more on the ICU crisis is Dr. Kashif Prasada from Brampton Civic Hospital. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, thank you. So let's get into it right away. Obviously, uh, this is a critical time right now for our hospitals in this province. Tell me a little bit about this latest order and how it impacts our hospitals directly. So it's not looking good right now. Um, we're at 600 beds now. When we hit 900 beds in Ontario, that's when the system will sort of will fall apart, basically. That's the limit. And the way things are going, we're adding 60 to 70 a day. Uh, we're going to hit that very soon, like uh, maybe in a week or two. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's crazy. Like um, we're, A lot of us are being drafted to work in ICU. Every space in the hospital is being used. Even the operating room, the uh, room used for um, heart attacks is being used. Every last space. And the emergencies, like we're having to reorganize everything because every patient has COVID now. Like every walking patient, every patient brought in by a hospital. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty grim situation right now. Well, when we talk about that, obviously, there's decisions to be made as a result of this. There are people that have elective surgeries, so-called elective surgeries. However, there are people that say, no, 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 this is not a situation where this is elective for me. I need this. How do you go about making the decisions? No, it's, it's terrible because like someone who's had, you know, knee pain or hip pain for a year was waiting all year for that operating uh, time and that's gone someone who needs a surgery to find out what kind of cancer they have, that's been pushed off as well. So it's, it's going to delay and it's going to make a lot of people suffer. And um, the other thing is that um, with, uh, you know, when all the operating rooms shut down, everyday activities become a lot riskier. Like, is your drive to work, if there's no trauma team backing you up to do surgery, God forbid if you get into an accident, is that drive to work safe again? Is that bike ride going to be safe if... There's no ER hospital to back you up. Already, uh, we're hearing that, you know, let's say, God forbid, your, your kid has a life-threatening allergic reaction. You go to hospital, there's no room to treat them because all the uh, resuscitation rooms are taken by COVID patients. And, you know, like, I want to say, like, who, where are all the people who thought this was fake? Where are they now, honestly? Uh, we've really decided to roll the dice on this one, haven't we, as a province? Um, we should have, uh, you know, we can't treat this thing as if it's bad news that we could wish away. And now we're paying for that, unfortunately. And this is the reality that perhaps some of those people need to see. I honestly had a chance to actually get into an ICU last week at Humber River Hospital and saw it firsthand. And it's very difficult to watch. That's why we brought some of those visuals to our viewers to say, here's the reality. This is what you need to know. And this is why some of these stay-at-home orders are in place to try and get past this point. Oh, exactly. And you know, the tragedy is, is that the patients are a lot younger now. I think the average age is in the 40s who we're seeing now. And previously, in the previous waves, they were a lot older in their 70s or 80s. And then they'd come to the ICU. In about a week, they'd either make it or they would pass away. Younger people are holding on longer. So that's why they're taking the beds longer. That's why it's filling up. Why don't we focus on what things we can do, though? Um, governments can do a few things right now to fix things and, and stop this train wreck from happening. Uh, close schools and hotspot areas like York Region is a huge outlier. Numbers are going up. That's in the Toronto area. Uh, you can make workplaces safe if we can't close them. Um, look, there's a Canada Post worker who just died yesterday. Um, they, we all know about what happened at Amazon. Use rapid tests, put all the workers in N95 masks. And I think everyone can do something as well. You know, don't go indoors. This thing is really contagious now, especially these variants. It is everywhere in the GTA if you're here or in Ottawa. I had a close call myself, like my N95 mask saved me at work. Um, do grocery pickup or delivery if you can, but just avoid going inside anywhere if you can. And the, the last final thing is get vaccinated. It's almost like a movie where you're running across a bridge and the bridge is collapsing behind you in lava or something like that. Like that's where we're at right now and get the only way to save yourself is get a vaccine as quickly as possible because you don't know where you're gonna get um, uh, exposed. It's just that contagious right now. Great point to finish off on, Dr. Kashif Prasada. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Important messages for everyone to hear. Thank you. Stay safe out there. You as well. Let's send things over to Dina and Sid.